All right, we're here for a week four matchup of the P4G. But before we get to that, make sure to check out this quick team blur. And of course, like the video and make sure to subscribe. Today, we take on Shuggle and coach of the Philadelphia Stungies in what could be a revenge match for Shuggle since the last time we faced him, we managed to take home the W. Shuggle King has actually been on a tear this season so far, securing three straight wins and even picking up a 6-0 last week, so we definitely have a tough game ahead of us. Now, Shuggle's team consists of... God of War, Mandibuzz, Milotic, Galarian Slowbro, Rhyperior, Mimikyu, Hisuian Electro, Tauros, Bisharp, and then his first terror captain is Smeargle with Normal Ghost and Electric, and his second terror captain is Cryagonal with Ice, Ground and Steel. A super scary team with some incredible hard hitting threats such as God of War and Tauros while also having plenty of bulky mons that's going to be difficult to break down. With this in mind though, let's head into our own team to see what we brought this week. First on our team this week, you can probably guess we have the Captain Cheerios to start with coming with the reckless ability to do a ton of damage. We're running a pretty straightforward choice cap set on Star after this week with the Adamant Nature and a spread of 56 HP, 252 attack, 4 in defense, 196 in speed. This is making Star Raptor faster than a max speed Gardevoir, as I can't imagine Mimikyu ever being choice cap, and I think it's highly unlikely that Milotic would be. The moves for Star Raptor are pretty straightforward this week. U turn for momentum as Shuggle has a pretty good answer in Rapier, and being able to switch out and get something else in can be very beneficial. Again, Brain Bird as a second move, just because it hits hard and there's not much else to that actually. Double H is our third move, same as Brave Bird, just the strongest secondary stab move we have. And lastly, close combat for the coverage. As mentioned, Shuggle has the Rhyperia, and the only move to really hit it is going to be close combat. Once again, coming in as our second mod, we have Kevin Crunchy for Alligator. It's actually going to be a lead Pokemon this week, as I have a plan for Smeagol in case Shuggle King decides to lead with it, and we're rocking a spread of 24 HP, 252 attack, and 232 in speed with the Jolly Nature. This is to make for Alligator naturally faster than Smeagol, being able to outspeed turn 1 if needed. And now our selection of moves are going to be Trailblaze once again because it's a strong move into Milotic and it deals with anything our primary attack move does not. So as you can probably guess, Liquidation as our stab once again because it's just the best move to use with sheer force and it hits pretty much everything, even the Hisuian Electrode as it's not too bulky and as I mentioned we have Trailblaze for Milotic. Substitute is our third move and this is our way to bypass any Schmeagel shenanigans and in general I think it's a pretty good move to have in this match because even Milotic can have trouble bringing a Substitute. Salt stands for our last move, as I don't see Gator as a win con this week with Dragon Dance, but it is gonna come as an early game breaker. Though that might bite us in the bud not having that speed boost, but we'll see. For our third month this week, we're bringing on Assault Vest, Lucky Charms to Meloetta. I once again fall into the need of AB just because we need something that can take special hits, but also threaten offensively, and we do so with the Timonasia and the spread of 248 in HP, 84 in special attack, 176 in speed. Our moves are going to be Energy Ball to hit the right pier specifically, but of course it also works very well for Milotic. Secondly, we have a strong stab move in Hyper Bush. It's just generally the best move to click, unless we know Mimikyu is there. Shadow Ball to hit the aforementioned Mimikyu, but also because it's our strongest move into the Gardawa, which is part of why Meloetta is here. Lastly, we have Thunderbolt to hit the Mandibuzz, but it works for Milotic as well. Coming in as our fourth month this week, we have our Tower Captain, and also a debut in Honey Nut the Levani. It's going to be Terra Fairy with the Life Orb, and I truly hope it can put in the work this week. You're going to be a Jolly Nature with a spread of 72 HP, 2-2 attack, 4 in defense, 4 in special defense, and 176 in speed. 72 in HP makes us round out with a 9, maximizing the usage of Life Orb. The moves are going to be Trailblaze as our Grass Stab, since we can somewhat get away with not running anything stronger, so boosting our speed is a big bonus. Knock Off, both because it's generally just a good move, but it's also a best way to hit the Galarian Slowbro with. In the first slot we have Terror Blast, which of course becomes a fairy move and is really strong into a lot of Shuckle King's team, being either neutral or super effective. Lastly we have Sword Stance, if we can get to a plus 2 and then get a Trailblaze off, Levani can really potentially sweep this match. Trickster Tinkerton as our 5th Monster League, running the Mold Break ability because it lets us bypass stuff like Mimikyu's Disguise. Our item spread is a little bit different than usual though. As we have Choice Scarf Tinkerton this week, we are doing this to hopefully catch the God of off guard if Shuggle thinks he can outspeed and kill if he's Choice Scarf himself. Now our spread is going to be 116 attack, 144 in spadef, and 248 in speed. We're running the careful nature, still making Tinkerton as a pretty good spadef wall. And for moves, we're going to have knockout for good utility. You already know it's just a good move. Then we have Play Rough as our first stab since it has a good value into the Mandibus this week. We have Heavy Slam as our second stab move, and we're running this in case we need to be able to click a steel move multiple times in a row. Lastly, we are running Gigaton Hammer though. I still think this is a very good move, I just wanted the extra security with Heavy Slam. For our last one this week, you know him, you love him. We are going back to Quaker Life to Dolphin, but it's going to be with a more standard moveset this time around. Rocking the ever so stylish Purple Air Jordans this week with the Impish Nature and a spread of 248 HP, 252 in defense and 8 in special defense. 
This just makes Don Fan a straight up physical wall with the moves of knockoff, because you know it's knockoff. Rapid Spin for general speed control and hassle control. Earthquake is our main attack move, because it's just really strong. And then lastly, we have Stealth Rock, because I do want hassles up. And while we can't really touch the Mandibus, I think with the combination of knockoff plus rocks, we can still pressure it. That is our entire team, and I think this is going to be a very interesting battle, as I'm sure Shoggle is out for some revenge. As always, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like on the video, leave a comment with of the team builder, and subscribe to the channel for any future content. And with that, I'll head into the battle, so see ya in just a little bit. Alright, so we're here for a P4G Week 4 game. We're going up against Shuggle King, coach of the something stunkies. Oh my god, I, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> I think it's the Philadelphia stunkies, I think. Uh, he brought an interesting team, so he brought Rhyperior, God of War, Cryogonal, Tauros, Milotic, and Mandibus. I did expect the um, Globro to potentially come, and I thought Smeagol was going to be the Terra Captain rather than Cryo. Originally, I was going to lead for Alligator into a lead... Um, like I was going to lead for Alligator into lead... Uh, what's it called? Smeagol? I still think I'm going to lead for Alligator. It's here to... We have Sub if he leads like Milotic. Um... The lead Mandibus might be a little bit annoying just because of a potential knockoff. Foul play will do a lot to, to Gata as well. Yeah, if he has foul play, he'll always like be able to break a sub. So I gotta either hope he doesn't have it or, or you know, just... Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll play by ear. I didn't have the... Okay, so he leads trolls. Um, Is that really... Like, is that like super, super bad for me? Um, it's a little bit bad because like neither of us kill neither of us necessarily kill each other, right? Grass. So she could be trailblaze, which I mean neither of us will, again neither of us will get a speed boost from trailblaze. Yeah, so body slam does a lot, liquidation does a lot. Am I willing also I did get his team? Am I willing to trade damage on Horos for damage on Feraligator is the question. If he's choice banded. In case he's banded. Feraligator should still always live a hit here. Right? I'm kind of thinking I want a liquidation. Like it's it's really weird, I know, but it's like I almost I almost think the damage is worth it. Like I'm gonna be honest, I almost think the damage is worth it. The source is really really annoying. If I can get rocks up after that, then it's almost dead. I know Gator will also then almost be dead. We have other ways of beating most of his mons. I will liquidation turn one. Yeah, I, I figured he would body slam too. I got 100 figured. It does about what I figured it would. So yeah, this is just gonna be the exchange. I kind of. Um, Imagine it was going to be here. Now, I really, really, really wish I had Aqua Jet. I think at 106, I actually might still have enough for a sub. If I, yeah, if I can come in again without Hassles up, I have enough for sub. Um, so I went to 106, which is 33. So he did 67. 67 is Life of Games, Life of Shivers. We just, we kind of just exchanged below there. So I can go, I can go Dawn Fan, which kind of was to check to this. Um, Dawn Fan is not really needed for that much else, like Rhyperia, but Rhyperia is kind of scary. I'm going to preserve my Feraligator here. Maybe I, had I been Dragon Dance right there, that would, that would not have been bad. Then again, I feel like, actually plus one, plus one liquidation would most likely take out the Tauros. So yeah, I'm, I guess I'm a little sad I didn't, um... I didn't, I didn't have Dragon Dance there. Like, if I had Dragon Dance over Source Dance, that would have been way better. Yeah, and Scarf cannot do that, so he definitely is, like, life hold. Life hold of force. I mean, we should take this decent. I mean, I say decent. We take. <laughs> um, if not, does it here? 29 to 34. He's sitting at 5, then... He's sitting at 25. Uh, it should. I'm gonna knock whatever, like, Mandibus coming in. Uh, I guess this is, like... I mean, I could, I guess I could have given him up for Alligator to then get in a better offensive position here. But getting damage on Taurus is not bad because it means we can pressure it a little bit more later on. Though it is faster than most of our team and I don't get hassles up. Like, he doesn't die to hassles. I don't even think he dies to two. I think he's, yeah, he's just out of range of two, which is kind of annoying. I'm expecting this to be Mandibus, right? So I'm clicking knockoff and then coming Mandibus. It's Milo. Actually, I'll take the Milo as well. I will 100% take Milo as well. Knockoff. I'm fine with that. That oh, that was a great. I was about to say that was good damage. It's heavy duty boots, so yeah, if we can get rocks later, it will take damage. That's nice to know. Um, I'm kind of feeling Meloetta now. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna look at the Taurus Kelp here. So Taurus with Sheer Force Life Orb would do 60 to 71 to Meloetta. Meloetta. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it flip turns here, Milo, because that's what I'm thinking. If it flip turns, right? He does. About 10%, so we would take flip turn into Toro's body slam. 
Uh, I believe Tauros does get throat chops. So I'll plug that real quick. I don't think it would do much more than Buddy Slam, though. Ooh, it's a roll. Uh, if he gets a high high roll on the flip turn, he could potentially get the roll with the... Yeah. Am I should I just predict the... I'm I'm gonna go Milo. I'm gonna go Milo. I don't think it's worth because I was I was even thinking should I just let Donovan stay in here and if it dies he dies. But no, I think I think going Milo here is probably the better choice always. Yeah, he does flip pen. See, I should I knew I knew he was probably gonna flip pen, so I should I should have thought of that. Like I should have I should just play as if I knew he was gonna flip turn right and then go with my gut and then stay in, take the flip turn, get my rocks up. Like that's what I should have done here, 100% of the time, and I, I think it's a misplay to not do it. Like I do, I do think that's a small misplay. Like I don't think I can do that better. But, like the sequencing would be much better in my, would, would be much more in my advantage if I just stay in there, take a the little bit of chip from the flip turn, and get my rocks up. Because now I'm in a good position. He doesn't have a good switch into Don. Well, he can switch into Mandibus. Mandibus wouldn't take any damage really, but it's like just the principle of getting my hassles up. Uh, is Mandibus one of the birds that still kept default? It is. So both both Mandy and um, what's his face? Both Mandy and Cryo can be removers. Now, am I willing? Am I willing to give up? I think I am willing to give up Meloetta's health here for the exchange of killing Taurus. I think I am because it's like I think he has terror ground on fire, right? Terror ground on fire. So does but I'm choice Gavin on Tingathan. I don't think he's gonna expect that, right? I'm just gonna make sure I am choice growth, right? I did okay, I was about to say I did keep that set, right? Like I'm like <laughs> I mean, honestly, Tingaton here might not be the worst. Honestly, like honestly, honestly, like I would I would real choice scarf like super early. But I'll keep damage to a minimum. I'll keep damage to minimum, still have a very healthy. Yeah, I'll keep damage to minimum, still have a very healthy um Meloetta. I think I think that's worth it. If I'm being honest, so my control didn't click the second time because I don't think he ever clicks earthquake yet. Oh, he doubles. I, I wonder what he goes into. Milo, Cryo. That's fine. I'm in with Tingaton anyway. Um, if he takes grounds and I Gigaton Hammer here, how much does how much they do? The problem is you can't click uh, Gigaton Hammer twice in a row, right? Like that's the main issue with with the whole thing about uh, Tingaton. I am Mole Breaker. Um, doesn't doesn't matter too much in this matchup which ability we were because like he doesn't have an intimidate bone tempo uh mole breaker i don't know it doesn't it lets me bypass mimikyu but mimikyu didn't come so i'm like kind of okay with that um i kind of want to play rough on this um if he terrors and terror grounds how much does that do terror blast we take we take about half but we keep but because we kept mellow and, um, yeah, because we kept Meloetta somewhat healthy, we can potentially just take the double hit here if we really want to. So I think I actually will just Gigaton Hammer. If he goes Milo, he goes Milo. It is. Yeah, no, he stays in then Terrace. I think he's Terra Brown, right? I feel like that's the only. He could be Steel. Steel would be really annoying here, actually. He's Steel. Oh, uh, if he. Okay. I might have screwed. I might have <laughs> not done the greatest right there because I didn't realize that he could just be Terra Steel and be more defensive oriented with it. I mean, we still get good damage. He's not that bulky, I think. I think does absolutely nothing. Um, I will be switching to Mellow now, I think. But then again, is Mellow at a good switch here? Even like, I'm not 50 50 on that. Like, Mellow will take the hit, but it doesn't do that much back, is the issue, right? Because I didn't, I didn't pack like Focus Blast. Actually, Mellow cannot touch this thing at all, which is really, really bad. Yeah, this thing, this thing, I actually. Oh, this thing I kind of walls my Levani set too, which is really annoying. I should I should have stayed with the Terra Fire. I was fire for the longest time, but then I realized Fairy is actually really good into his team because of his Bishop is neutral. Oh uh, shoot! Yeah, wait, this is a uh, this is actually kind of bad. I don't want to stay in, so I'm gonna go. But I don't think Melo is the correct answer. That was a good switch here. Yeah, uh, I I neglected that Cryogonal too much with my Melo. Like I I made the Meloella set in the thought process of we need to be able to hit a bunch of different stuff and I just did not realize that like I barely I cannot really touch their steel cryo which is really bad actually like I I 100% lose this one we want like 100% of the time but he has ice beam freeze dry I mean and he does get the freeze you're hitting me he got the freeze in his last match as well by the way I just want to quickly point that out
Um, it is like the same set with Agasa armor and whatnot. Do I just lose here if he just goes for Agasa arming here? There's just no shot, right? Okay, I am very much thinking I want to go hard Star Raptor here. Star Raptor, actually, if he's offensive, I, I haven't been paying attention to the damage. I guess Tingaton, Tingaton is no way to, to really look at the damage here. I went to 251, 259, sorry, 259. So I went to 83. When Ice Beam did about 17. Oh, didn't didn't do a best. It did 17%. Which is a high roll on Max Timid. He could maybe then be modest. And that would actually if he's modest, but I then outsped him, that could just tell him that I'm not um I'm gonna go back into Tingaton. Oh, I am uh I don't know how to play around this crack at all. Like it's gonna be so difficult to break. That freeze on Melo was also weird. I didn't like that. Yeah, he recovered. That's so annoying that he gets like this. Well, he could have recovered on Melo. Mel it didn't really matter. But it's just like that freeze is so annoying. Um, Gigaton has still the move that does the most. I will just knock off. I want to see if he has like a trouble berry or anything. Uh, he could expect me to click like fighting move here potentially. Or um, yeah, we don't get a fire move. A ground move like a mold breaker would bulldoze potentially. Yeah, I, I don't have a good way of, of playing around this uh, Kragonal, like at all. Knocking here can also reveal if he's like expert build or anything, so it would be... Okay, so he switches. I'm actually very happy I switches because <laughs> I don't have to... I don't want to deal with that. Hey, he goes Milo. Milo is always the correct play here, like 100% of the time. Like, unless he stays in, he could have just stayed in, because like, I, I think that Kragonal actually beats most of my team, if I'm going to be completely honest. Part of me want to go Levani. Like, part of me really want to go Levani here. Um, Levani at plus two can do a button to a Kragon. So if I can get Levani set up, we can do a button. Like, Knockoff should be able to take it out, like, more or less. And honestly, we are pretty much in a position where if I can get... If I can get, um, what's it called? If I can get Levani in front of this Milotic at some point, I think I can pretty much, like, I can very close come to an endgame where I can just win with Levani. Which is pretty high, I wanna win, I kinda wanna win with Levani, that would be nice. I, see, I wanna go Meloetta, but I don't wanna, I am gonna go Meloetta. I don't wanna give him the free turns, is the issue. I don't wanna give him the free turns, it's super, super obnoxious that he got that freeze. Uh, okay, I, I'm playing kinda like, I wouldn't say bad, but I'm not playing great right now because I'm trying to figure out when he got a crit there. I mean, the crit, I guess, doesn't really matter. But like, I'm trying to play in a way where, um, I can, I'm trying to play in a way where I can figure out how to win this game because Cryo being steel threw me a little bit off. The freeze is kind of annoying. Like, don't get me wrong, the freeze hasn't mattered yet, but it's gonna matter in the, like, because I'm probably gonna sack Melo to the incoming Taurus right here. Like, I'm just gonna be honest. It's like, because, oh, he goes Mandibus. I mean, I'll stay in and try, like, I'll live one hit, I think, from where I am. And I'll go for like T Bolt. We don't do too much, but I'll. It's a roll to live here, but I'll go for it. That freezes him off. Like... <laughs> no. Oh, you just. Oh, it's Iron Defense on this shit as well. You're kidding me. I'm gonna lose because. I'm gonna lose because of the freeze. I'm gonna lose because of the freeze because that T Bolt would probably have been a 2 hit KO. Yeah, yeah, I'm just. I'm, that's that's it. That's the game. I think that's the game. I think that's the game. Does this thing get. I think this thing gets body right? It does not, okay. I, I still don't know how I'm supposed to win the game, though. I still don't know. I like... Oh my <laughs> Yeah, no, now the freeze matters, by the way. For anyone wondering, now the freeze 100% matters. 1,000% it matters now. <laughs> that freeze 1,000% matters now. Um, I think I just have to leave any sword stance. Hope he doesn't have anything. Brave Bird's gonna hurt like a bead. Because, like, Tingleton doesn't output enough damage. He's plus four. Freeze! Please, Pokemon, take Freeze out of the fucking game. Take Freeze out of the fucking game. Take Freeze out of the fucking game. Freeze out of the fucking game. Take Freeze out. Oh, you take Freeze out of the game. Like, no one likes Freeze. No one likes Freeze. 
give us the fucking frostbite that was the legend ashes it's 10 times better that would still have nerfed my loetta by the way that would still nerf my loetta a fair bit but it would at least been better it would have been better is like the most important thing right also he's 100 gonna be weak i'm on this thing by the way so like i i'll play oh my god with terror fairy does over half you're kidding Oh my god, yeah, I, I just lose. There's no, I have to crit. I have to crit on this hit. I have to crit. That's the only way I can win. Oh my god, that's so stupid. It's so stupid. No, my. I have. I have. GG. <laughs> I told you. Oh my god. I don't even know what to say. This is so stupid. This is so stupid. Like, it is actually just so stupid. It is actually just so stupid. It's so stupid. It is so it is so stupid! Like what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed I'm so annoyed. I am so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. Like I have not I have nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing left. But my one special attacker. My one special attacker got frozen. Like you cannot make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. Like you just can't. Um I'll Feraligator. Also, he wasn't. I think he wasn't weak armor. I don't think he got it. Oh my god, I'm so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> I mean, I'll for alligator, I'll sword stance on the roof potentially. And then I just have to crit. I just have to crit. That is all. I just have to crit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, the thing is, Meloetta would have put enough pressure on that he couldn't do the fucking Iron Defense shit. Like, Thunderbolt is basically a two-hit KO. It does, like, 45 to 50-ish. Like, more or less, right? Yeah, just have to crit. Come on, for Alligator. I believe in you, buddy. I believe in my Gator boy. Also, he's gotten two crits. I, I kind of feel like I'm old one. No! The game just said nope. No. I mean, no. This is so stupid. It's gonna. It's a. Is it seriously a six zero because because of a fucking beast? Kidding. Is this actually the the, the thing that we're doing here? I mean, okay. I should have gone Tingaton, I think, and I should have just spam play rock, play rock, play rock, play rock until I got the crits. Cause like he doesn't do. He sh he does almost like no damage. Right, like so I guess I misplayed as well, but I'm just I'm tilted off the the fucking face of the earth. Like this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Like this this scenario would never have happened if you fucking didn't freeze Meloetta, man. Or if I just at least thought and I missed the <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think this is my joy. I've had a couple of Joker moments before in other leagues. I think this is my Joker moment for this league. Like, Jesus Christ, what is... What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? The game is just saying no. Like, the thing is, I even think that Roost is a massive, massive throw. Because if I crit, it doesn't matter. I take you out with the next one probably anyway. So, like, the the Roost is... Uh, not Roost, Iron Defense, sorry. Roost would have been actually a decent play. <laughs> and he Roost now. Okay. Uh, I, oh my god, I missed another. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Okay, it's not an ass, but it's just it gets beaten very easily by like an Encore uh, Tingaton or something because I can just stall his fucking roost out. Like, I can just catch him on a rooster and Encore him, and then we just sit there for the next like 25 turns just to slowly kill him. This is stupid. This game is stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Um, I mean, <laughs> look forward to next week where I hopefully. Oh my god, I got the crit with the brain, but wow, thank you. And now I'm gonna not foul play. Woo! Yay! Oh, uh, like I couldn't have gotten the like I couldn't have gotten the crit with the two monsters that were plus two and able to actually kill the thing. No, no, it had to be with the turns where it did not matter. The RNG said no, not today, sir. I'm gonna EQ on this fucking Bruce. Watch me. Yeah. Uh, isn't that insane? Like, when, when you're just in such a losing position already, you just know what the correct plays are, no matter what. I'm gonna get my rocks up. 
Yeah. You can't stop. Why wait? Why are we knock off and just fucking foul play? There's more. Oh. Hey, Rooks. Ooh, ooh. Hey, Rooks. I'm sorry if I sound like mad and annoyed. It's just like, yeah, the game is. Yeah. It's not fun with stuff. Yeah, I, 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 the mo okay, I will say this. The most annoying part is this game has been a fucking hassle to get done. Like, there's so much shit that's, like, been going on. I'm not gonna, like, touch on anything. And we're playing this game, like, later than we were supposed to. And then it just... It's just... Hey, then it just turns into this. It's like, what was the point of the game now? What was the point of the game? Also, I'm gonna be the speediest Dawn fan in all the land. Whee! Like, I... I think the most annoying part is it became a 6-0. Like, that's so bad. <laughs> that's so bad for differential. And it was not a 6-0 at all. Like, please, can we take Freeze out of the game? Please, just do it. No one likes Freeze. Please, take it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to sign off there. As always, <laughs> if you like this video of me fucking going batshit insane, uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe for future content. Uh, I, I don't know what I remember. I don't remember what I'm usually saying. I'm out. Peace, YouTube.